Well, hello, I'm Matt Lucas, and today, I'm not sure what I've let myself in for, but I'm going to be quizzed by some mini Alopecia UK representatives. Hello, everybody. Lovely to see you all. Looking wonderful. Nice big waves. It's lovely to be here. Um, and I believe you have some questions to ask me. So let's dive right in. I'm going to pick a name. And then if you introduce yourself, tell me how old you are, how long you've had alopecia, if you like. Um, and then you can go ahead and ask me the first question. So um, first up, we've got Bonnie, who I heard recently won an award from Alopecia UK. Hello, Bonnie. Hi, um, I'm Bonnie and I'm nine years old and I've had alopecia for two years. Well, it's lovely to meet you and you're looking splendid in your T-shirt. Whereabouts are you? Um, Halifax, West Yorkshire. Very nice indeed, very nice. What is your question, Bonnie? And my question is that I've won an award with Alopecia UK, the Hannah Dennis Award, for all my fundraising efforts and raising awareness for alopecia. Have you ever won an award and what was it for? Well, congratulations to you. I have, I have won some awards, um, none of them as auspicious as yours, of course. But um, I, uh, I won, you know, David Walliams, who writes the wonderful books, and you'll know from Britain's Got Talent. Well, me and David worked together for many years and we made um, television programs. And some of those programs won uh, BAFTA awards. Uh, we won, I think, three of those. And we won um, Emmy awards in America and uh, all sorts, uh, uh, national TV awards and Royal Television Society awards, lots of lovely awards. but. I, I don't have any of them in my house. They're all in storage because I, um, I don't know. I'm one of those people, I, I, I like to think, I like to look forward, you know? So I'm very grateful to have the award, but um, I, I try and stay down to earth. So I don't have the awards all over my house, but it was very nice to get them. And thank you for your lovely question. What award, um, uh, Bonnie, would you most like to win? Um. I don't really know. I don't think I've heard of any other ones, but... Uh, yeah. How about... Um, how about an Oscar? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, the yeah. best actress. Maybe one day. You never know. <laughs> Thank you so much for your lovely question, Bonnie. I believe Dougal is next. Hello, Dougal. Hello, I'm Dougal. I'm 10 years old and I've had alopecia for about four years. Uh-huh. So you were six when you lost your hair, which is the same age I was then. When yeah. I lost my hair. Is that about right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I've got a lovely hat. And whereabouts are you, Dougal? Uh, in the Cairns of Scotland, in Murray. Oh. oh, very nice. Very nice. No wonder you've got a, a hat on because it's quite, it's quite cold up there, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. So what's your question? like when you first lost your hair what did it feel like when I first lost my hair well it yeah. was a little bit it was a bit strange because um I didn't really know anyone else who was a child whose hair had just fallen out so um I was a bit confused really because I just thought well, what does this mean does this mean I don't know it was a, it was a bit unusual I didn't have anyone to compare it to really um apart from uh, a swimmer who was on TV called Duncan Goodhue. Um, but apart from that, I, so I was a bit, I was a bit baffled. I was perplexed. I was bewildered. I was flummoxed. But um, uh, in some ways, it was quite nice because I got lots of attention and I quite enjoyed all that attention. So in some ways, it was quite nice. In other ways, it was, like I say, a bit confusing. What did you feel like when you first lost your hair? Um, well, I didn't, I didn't, um, I lost it by, um, it started falling out and then I, I got it all cut out. Right. And then uh, I just felt scared about going back to school and everybody seeing it. And, and what did people say when you did go back to school? Well, people supported me. That's nice. And I read a, a, a news article 
Um, it said you'd been knocked down by a car. That's right. I was knocked down by a car when I was four, and the doctors thought maybe the the shock made the hair fall out two years yeah. later, six, which is a possibility. We don't know. Um, we don't really know quite why it happens, do we? We're not 100% sure uh, uh, why it happens or if it'll grow back. Some people lose their hair and it grows back. Some people lose their hair and it doesn't. Some people don't lose their hair, of course. Some people lose their hair when they're 40 or 50. Um, and uh, so, yes, I, un I understand that, those feelings that you had. Um, but, uh, but it has given you the opportunity to wear a marvellous hat. Mm -hmm. So congratulations to you and your hat. Mm -hmm. And thank you for your lovely question, Dougal. Mm -hmm. Now we, uh, we have another question. This is from Isaac. Hello, Isaac. Hello, my name's Isaac and I'm eight and a half years old and the half is very important. <laughs> very important, it's a vital, it's a vital, vital statistic. And I'm glad that you've pointed it out to me. Um, I'm from Warsaw in the UK and um, I lost my hair when I was about three years old. Wow, and how, how old are you now? Eight and a half, did you say? Yeah. Yeah, and that half, by the way, I don't know if you know, but that half is very important. <laughs> so, 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 so what is your question? Do you ever want to grow hair or are you happy with your look? Hmm. I'm happy with my look right now. And I'll tell you why. Because if I grew hair and it was a bit blonde, I'd look a lot like Boris Johnson. And I don't want to look <laughs> So I'm very happy not having <laughs> hair. But recently I grew at the age of 46. I'm nearly, four, I'll be 47 in a couple of weeks. I grew my first ever moustache. Wow. Oh, oh. Yeah. Wow. And it looks a bit unusual because of course I don't have eyebrows like some of you. But, <laughs> oh. Sorry, sorry. No, no it's fine. I tell them I'm busy. Um, yeah, so so I grew my first moustache recently, and that was I looked a bit a bit unusual because I'd never really had a moustache before. But no, I don't want hair now. I'm happy with it. This is me. This is who I am. Um, uh, and because I do acting, it's quite good to not have hair because it means I can put different wigs on and look really, really, really different. You know. So I like not having hair. And in the summer, when I get too hot, I can just take my cap off and cool down much more easily. And so, yeah, I'm good with it. I like it. I don't think I want hair anymore. What about you? Um, I don't want hair either. You don't want hair. We don't need it. You don't need hair. You're already a legend. You don't need <laughs> hair. Thank you for your lovely questions. And... Um, I'll be very sad when you have a birthday because you won't be eight and a half anymore. <laughs> Don't worry, because one day you will be nine and a half and that will be a great day. Thank yeah. you, Isaac. Thank you. Now, who have we got next? We have Maya. Did I, did I pronounce it correctly? Yes. Maya. Hello, Maya. Hi. How are you? So I'm how old, may I ask, you shouldn't really ask a lady her age, but how old are you? I'm 11. You're 11. And when did you when did you first get alopecia? I think when I was either four or five or six. Right, right. So, and whereabouts are you? Um, London. Where are you? Oh, you're in London. Whereabouts? Brent. You're in Brent. So that's near like that's sort of the west, isn't it? Near Wembley. London. Near Wembley. So I grew up near Wembley. I used to work at Wembley Stadium when I was in my teens. Yes, wow. yes. So what's your, what's your question, Maya? Knowing what you know now, what would you tell your younger self in relation to alopecia? Ooh, that's a good question. Knowing what I know now, what would I tell my younger self in relation to alopecia? That it doesn't define me. 
It doesn't define me. It doesn't, it isn't the most interesting thing about me. Um, that it's just one of many, many, many things about me. And it's hard, isn't it? Because sometimes kids see you in the street, especially kids you don't know. They might see you on the bus and they might go, you've got no hair, you've got no hair. Why have you got no hair? Or they might stare at you or they might sneak a photo of you on their phones or they might laugh or point or, or even stand back a little bit because they're a bit scared. Because in their eyes, that's the only thing they see about you, isn't it? The fact that you've got no hair. But everyone on this call knows that there's a million other things about you. Tell me something about you, Maya, that has nothing to do with alopecia. Um, nothing really much. I want to be like an actress. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. And even if you had a full head of hair, you would still want to be an actress, right? Yeah. Wouldn't make any difference. Yeah. And when you act, when you act and you're really good in something, are you really good because you've got no hair? No. Yeah. You're just really good because you're Maya, who's a really good actress, correct? Correct. Exactly. And all of you here today have things about you that are much more interesting than the fact that you've got no hair. It's a, like a minor detail and that's all it is, you know. But sometimes when other people see you, it's the first thing they see, so it's the thing they think about. But we know, because we're all in it together, that it's just one of many things about us. So, um, so it's a minor detail, that's what I think, you know. Now, who, who is going to ask the next question? I believe it's, um, is this Jonathan? Hello, Jonathan. Hi, I'm Jonathan. Uh, I'm 10 and I first got alopecia six months ago. Wow, wow. you're a newbie. Welcome to the gang. Welcome. And whereabouts are you, Jonathan? I'm in Kent. You're in Kent. Lovely. So you, so you're, oh, wow. So you got alopecia in lockdown. Yeah. Wow. So you, have you been back to school yet since you had alopecia? Yes. So the, it kind of started falling out when I was in school. Right. Because we had a point where we were in school uh, and then we went back to uh, lockdown. Um, and yeah. It's... And how was everyone at school when they saw the new year? Well, at first I kind of had to say that my dad was trying to do a haircut. Um, <laughs> but once it kind of all fell out, I kind of had to tell them. And were they okay and about kind it? Of, uh, yeah, they were. In fact, some some of them really helped me. That's nice to hear. That's a nice story. So what's your question? Um, why did you choose comedy as a career? Well, when you've got a face that looks <laughs> as silly as this, there's not much else you can do. I mean, I wanted to be a really serious actor, like a Shakespearean actor. Actually, I've done a bit of Shakespeare, but I wanted to be very serious theatrical actor. But I look like a pudding. Look at this face. I look like a big blancmange, you know. So, so um, I don't know. I, I think it's, I'm quite a silly man. In fact, having alopecia in a way forced me not to take myself too seriously. You know, um, it was it was good in a way. So 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 I think I think the the yeah I think I became you know some people they're very silly when they're very young and then they become more sensible as they get older. I think I got the older I got the sillier I got, and so becoming a comedian it, it's it's I, it always felt like the only thing I would be able to do. Um, you know. Also, I think there is a bit of truth in this, and I don't know whether any of you can... Uh, uh, kids did used to laugh at me, you know, and I'm sure we've all experienced this. And so I used to think, well, if they're going to laugh at me, let me give them something to laugh at. Let me give them... I don't just want them looking at me and laughing because I've got no hair. I want them to laugh at me because I'm funny. And so, and so I thought, yeah, everyone's going to stare at me. Let me give them something to stare at. And that's how I became a performer, you know, 
maybe maybe Maya can identify with that because she likes to act, or any 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 of the, anyone else on this call who who likes to perform can identify that I didn't just want to be the kid with no hair. I thought I'd 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 sort of use it in a way. Does that make sense? Yeah. What What do you want to be when you leave school, Jonathan? Do you know yet? Well, I was thinking because I'm into like uh, eco things and like saving the planet from plastic and stuff. So I was going to become like a designer to like help the planet. Try that's a great idea. Cover. Well, that's a much more useful thing than what I do. So good luck with that. Good luck. I look forward to you saving the world. And thank you in advance. And thank you for your lovely question. Now, who is next? I believe uh, we have a Doctor Who fan. Dante. Hey, Dante. How are you? Good. So, Dante, how old are you? Nine. You're nine. And you've had alopecia? You have got alopecia. I've yeah. had alopecia for about a year and a half. You've had it for a year and a half. And whereabouts are you, Dante? Uh... West Midlands, Worcestershire. West Midlands, Worcestershire. West Midlands, Worcestershire. That's good. You're in two places at once. That's fantastic. You must be magic. Maybe you should be on Doctor Who as one of the characters. So what's your question? Um, how did you become a comedian with alopecia? Well, as I was explaining um, just before, I, 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 I wanted people to, to look at me for the right reasons, you know? And, and, uh, um, and, and it's interesting because uh, when I was uh, starting out as a, as a comedian, I was 18 years old. And do you know what I used to do? I used to wear a wig on stage. And this was a wig that I had when I was a kid. When I was finishing at primary school and getting ready to go to secondary school, you know, big school when I was 11 or 12, um, we thought back then that it might be a good idea for me to wear a wig so that I, maybe I'll, I'll fit in a bit better. That's what we thought back then. We, none of us probably think that would be the right thing to do now, but back then, even though it was the wrong, it was the wrong thing to do, everybody did it with the best of intentions. And so I used to wear this wig. I got a wig on the National Health Service. Now, of course, they're saving people's lives, but then they were giving me wigs, but they didn't make children's wigs. And I was only 10 or 11, I had quite a small head and I had to have um, a woman's wig which they then cut down. So I had like this huge hair and no eyebrows at all. I think I looked uh, like a Doctor Who alien, to be honest with you. <laughs> anyway, anyway um, I used to go on stage as a stand-up comedian and I used to arrive at the theatres wearing this wig. So nobody questioned it, really, because why would you think an 18-year-old was wearing a wig? And I'd go on stage and then halfway through the show, I would scratch my hair scratch my head and my wig would move like this and the audience would gasp and then I'd just carry on and I would completely ignore it and I would leave them all a bit confused and it was great so it's an interesting thing because not having hair helped me as a comedian because when I started out I wasn't very good at all and I didn't get many laughs but the one laugh that was always guaranteed was when I did something funny with my wig so in a way Having alopecia did help me as a comedian. So, and then later on, when I did um, comedy shows, I've worn lots of different wigs. And, and not having hair means that when I wear a wig, I can really transform into someone else much more easily than, than most people can, because I'm what they call a blank canvas. Just like me. So, so actually, um, having alopecia has really helped me as a comedian. Hooray! Thank you for your lovely question, Dante. Well, and it's a great name as well. I don't know many people with that name. You're a one-off. Thank you so much. Now, we're gonna have another question. This is from uh, Brooke. Now, someone told me that Brooke would like to be a presenter one day, 
and um, you're already a budding actress and a dancer. Hello, Brooke. How are you? Hello, I'm good, thank you. So how old are you, Brooke? And when did you when did you get your alopecia? I'm ten, and I got alopecia when I was four. Wow! So you've had it a long time. And whereabouts? Whereabouts? Hooray! Somebody just blew a horn. Um, and where whereabouts do you live? Holbridge in Essex. Oh, you're in Essex. Lovely, lovely. And so and so, what's your question? My question is, who were the most in inspirational people that led you into your acting career and why? Well, um, I'm going to say someone, I'm not going to name a famous actor or actress, I'm going to say my grandmother. Um, uh, because she used to take me to the theatre when I was a kid. And, um, uh, and she would take me always on weekends and in the holidays and we'd just go and watch lots and lots of plays. And um, so she sort of nurtured my love of theatre. And then I suppose uh, in terms of other actors, who did I like watching? I like watching the funny people. I liked watching Laurel and Hardy. Do you know Laurel and Hardy? They're, they're in black and white. They're really, God, they were working nearly a hundred, well, they were working about a hundred years ago. So, so their films are really old, but they're really funny. Um, and uh, other people, other, other funny people. I just like watching funny people on the telly, people in, in sitcoms. And um, uh, they, they all, uh, there, was a, there was a double act uh, called Morecambe and Wise, who I'm sure your parents would, would know. And they were very funny. And um, yeah, and I like watching all sorts of actors. And, and who, who, who inspires you to, um, to be an actor? Well, obviously you. Oh, stop it, but thank you. Because um, I'm a wonderful actress. <laughs> My mum, because um, she helps me a lot. Lovely. And also someone else with alopecia. Um, Joanna Rousland Shand, because I also like cycling like she does. Mm -hmm. And yeah. And there's, no, no, there's, no, there's nothing you can't do just because you've got alopecia. You can do all the same things as everyone else, you know. So, well, that's lovely to hear and good luck with your acting. And, and you know, it's funny because the curtains behind you look like the curtains you get at the theatre, don't they? They look very theatrical. Mm -hmm. And so, and so, have you been able to do any acting at all in the pandemic? Um, yes, because our acting club that we do is on Zoom. Is it? That's good. Um, last week we were doing something about pantomimes and we had to act our character and my character was a wicked witch. Ooh, did you paint yourself green? <laughs> no. Well, next time. Paint yourself green, because you'll be able to get yeah. green all the way over your head. That would be great. That would be great. Well, good luck with your acting. I say the same, the same to Maya, and good luck with your presenting. And uh, it's been lovely to chat with you, and thank you. And we have another question now um, from Sienna. Hello, Sienna. Hello. How are you? Good, thank you. My name is obviously Sienna. Um, I'm nine years old. Um, I've had alopecia since I was born, but like it um, fully went when I was seven and came back again in like the last lockdown and then went all again. It can't make up its mind, can it? Nope. And whereabouts are you living? Dalbridge, West Midlands in England. Ah, someone else in the West Midlands. So... Um, I believe you have a question. Yes. My hobbies are kickboxing and acting. What do you like to do to relax while you're not busy doing work or stuff like that? Wow, that, those are great hobbies because they're really different from each other, aren't they? Yes. That's really impressive. Um, kickboxing, well, I won't get on your wrong side. Um, what do I like to do? I love to watch football. I love to watch football. I'm a big Arsenal fan. 
Now you're all muted. So if any of you are booing, I can't hear you. So there. Um, yes, I can. <laughs> I can see you, Henry. I can see you, Dougal. I can see what you're doing. And Emily. Yes. See lots of thumbs going down. Well, I like Arsenal. I love watching Arsenal. I like eating chocolates. I don't know if that can be can be called a hobby. Um, uh, Maya's nodding. Uh, Sienna, you think it, it could be a hobby? Definitely. Um, uh, what else do I like doing? Well, I lived in America for a while. I lived in Los Angeles in California. And the nice thing about Los Angeles is it's a city and it's really built up and there's traffic and, uh, you know, it's a real city. It's a metropolis as they call it. But even within that city, there are all these hiking trails. And even though I'm quite a lazy man, I like just sitting down and doing things. I really did used to enjoy going on hikes um, in, in California and, and uh, easy to do. You could just drive 15 or 20 minutes, park your car, and you could go on a lovely hike through really rugged trails for a good hour or so, hour and a half, and then come home and, um, and put your feet in the pool. Oh, it was lovely. So I would say hiking, but not hiking in Britain where it's freezing, but hiking in America where it's nice and warm. Um, uh, um, watching football and eating far too much chocolate. Those are my hobbies. Yes, yes, those are my hobbies. And watching rubbish on YouTube. Does anyone go on YouTube and then you can't get off YouTube and it keeps sending you somewhere else and somewhere else and somewhere else. And you think, oh, well, I was gonna watch a film tonight, but all I've done for the past two hours is watch absolute rubbish on YouTube. And uh, I've seen uh, Niam, well, Niam, you've got your hand up. So maybe you agree, uh, uh, absolutely. Yeah, so thank you, those are my hobbies. Um, now, we have another question, which is Niam. Now Niam, is, have I pronounced it correctly? Um, it's Niam. Niam. Niam, you see, I got it wrong. I got it wrong. Hello, Niam. How are you? Good. And where are you? Where are you from? Um, I'm from Leicester. From Leicester. Yeah. Well, they've got a very good football team. And 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 how old are you? <coughs> and how long since you've since you got alopecia? Um, I'm seven, and I've had it for four years. Wow. Can you remember having hair? No, not really. No. Not really. Well, you look great. Thank you. You look great. And uh, so you've got a, you've got a, are you a Leicester fan? Do you support Leicester City? Yeah. Yes. Do you remember when they won the league or were you too little? Um, I remember. Ah, well, that's a nice memory to have. So um, uh, I believe you're a, a, a great British Bake Off fan. Now, if you didn't know, I am one of the presenters now on the Great British Bake Off. And so you, you have a question about that, is that right? Yeah. Have you ever seen a cake on Bake Off that made you laugh inside because it was terrible? And can oh. you tell whose it was? Well, <laughs> now the thing about Bake Off is everybody's very, very nice on Bake Off. So I have to be very, very nice, but I can tell you, but only if you promise not to tell anyone else that on the Bake Off in the last series, in the very first episode of the last series, everybody had to do for their showstopper. Does it, have, have, have you, any of you seen the Bake Off? Do you, any of you watch it? Yes, yes, oh, quite a few hands going up. It's a nice program, it's a nice program. You watch it a little bit, Maya, watch it a, a bit. Um, well, in the first episode, people made cakes um, of their heroes. And there was a lady called Laura, who was very good baker and made it to the final. And she was very funny and she had lovely blonde hair and we got on very well. I liked all the bakers, by the way. Um, but um, Laura made a cake of Freddie Mercury, you know, the singer from Queen, who's my favorite singer actually. And it was very good, but at the last minute, it sort of collapsed. And like some of the head collapsed and I had to really, really, really try really hard not to laugh, really hard. But it's hard sometimes. 
but I think I just about managed it. Um, what about you, Niam? Have you have any of the cakes made you laugh? And um, well, I liked um, them all. Yeah. So, and there's not really one that um, I found terrible. No, no. Well, they tasted the thing about that cake. Uh, uh, Laura's a great baker, and although the Freddie Mercury's head sort of collapsed, the cake tasted very nice indeed. You know, so. I think it's better to have a cake that looks a bit wonky, but tastes great than having a cake that looks great, but tastes like a poo. That's what <laughs> I'm saying. Thank you very much for your question. Um, now, uh, we have another question. Uh, is this, is it Neve, is that right? Have I pronounced it correctly? Yeah. Yay! Do people get your name wrong sometimes? Yeah. Because it's so, spelt very differently in England to how it's pronounced, isn't it? Yeah, it's Gaelic. It's Gaelic, that's right. Um, uh, so how old are you? And when did you, when did you get alopecia? And where are, you, where are you at the moment? At the moment, I'm in Wales. Very nice. South Wales. Where did you get alopecia? I think it was when I was two or three years old. And how old are you now, Neve? Seven. Seven? Wow. I've been bald for two years, but I've had alopecia for four years. I see, I see. Okay. And what's your, what's your question? My question is, is, did you enjoy doing your Boris Johnson speech when and you were on the Great British Bake Off? Yeah, so I did a Boris Johnson impression. Did I enjoy it? I think I enjoyed it more than he enjoyed watching it. Um, uh, if he saw it, I don't know. You know, I, 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 you know, I do, I, I do a, a Boris Johnson impression. You know, I sort of, you know, you know, you know. Come on, let's get, let's get Brexit done. You know, you know, you know, you know he talk, he sort of talks like that, doesn't he? So I, I, you know, sometimes I, I sort, I, I do an impression of. Boris Johnson, you know, <laughs> and, you know, you know. So yeah, I, 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 I didn't really know I could do a Boris Johnson impression and, until quite recently, and I just sort of did it um, and filmed myself and put it on Twitter, and it went, it sort of went viral, and they were playing it all over the world. And so um, uh, when I joined the Great British Bake Off, the other presenter, Noel, you know, with the long funny hair. He, he suggested that I do a Boris Johnson impression um, for the Bake Off. Um, yeah, he's a, he, you know, I mean, you know, he's, 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 he's fun to do, you know. Uh, <laughs> can, you do, can, you do, can you do any impressions, Neve? I'm Boris Johnson. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I do do My mum and me do it sometimes for a laugh. Uh, you do Boris impressions as well, that's great. Mm -hmm. You've got the accent there. <laughs> that's fantastic that's fantastic um well thank you for your question yes i i do i enjoy doing i yeah you know i like i like i like doing it you know it's good it's it's fun it's fun it's fun i uh, yeah it's fun to do um thank you for your lovely question neve so now we have another question uh and this is from sophie hello sophie how are you hi i'm good what about you i'm i'm all right thank you you know, it's nice to chat to everybody. Whereabouts are you? I'm in Scotland, in between Glasgow and Edinburgh. Oh, really? And so whereabouts is that? West Lothian. West Lothian. You know, my favourite singers are from Scotland. They're called the Proclaimers. Do you know the Proclaimers? No. When you're older, when you're older, ask, ask somebody about the Proclaimers. You might, you might enjoy their music. Um, and how old are you? I'm nine. You're nine. And when did you get alopecia? I got alopecia when I was five or six. Wow. So that's, that's been a while, hasn't it? And, and um, so what's your question? And my question is, um, was it ever hard to get, it was ever hard or difficult to get an acting audition? or um, jobs? Well, it's weird, isn't it? Because I don't know 
which jobs I didn't get because I've got no hair because nobody ever said no one has ever said to me we can't cast you because you've got no hair and so it's possible that I got more jobs than I would have got because I can wear a wig and transform myself so I, the the truth is I don't really know the answer to that what I do know as I mentioned earlier is that in in the work that I did with David Williams the fact that I didn't have hair we used to do sketch shows, you know, comedy shows where we'd play lots of different characters throughout the show. And in the work I did with David, me not having hair was the best thing of all because it meant that the wigs could transform me. Um, and actually, particularly if I wanted to play a woman, I could look, I could look much more like a woman uh, uh, by having a woman's wig on than, I, than most men um, probably would, would be able, you know, I found it easier than, than most actors. So, so I'm going to say, I think it worked out in my favor. I think it was a good thing not to have hair as an actor. I think, um, you know, and also, of course, sometimes I play characters that are completely bald. And, um, you know, when David Williams plays a bald character, he's got to go and he's got to have a whole bald wig stuck over his hair and, you know, and, and have it all sort of joined. And that takes a long time. Whereas for me, ta-da! I don't even have to brush a single hair. So I'm gonna say it probably got me more work. Thank you for your lovely question. Um, now, uh, Emily, Emily has a question. Hello, Emily. Hello. So how old are you? I'm 11. And how long have you had alopecia? Three or four months. Oh, wow, three or four months. Yeah. Wow. And 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 um, where are you living? Uh, Hatfield, Hertfordshire. I know Hatfield very well. I know the Galleria in Hatfield. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yes. Nice place to go shopping. So, what's your what's your question? My question is: If I had to be a food, I'd be a potato because it can be baked, mashed, fried, roasted, or turned into crisps or chips. If you had to be a food, what would you be and why? Well. I wasn't expecting that question. Um, <laughs> I agree with you that the potato is a wonderful vegetable, <clears throat> very adaptable, very malleable, a bit like us, a bit like me, can wear any kind of wig, can transform. <laughs> um, I think I would like to be, what's your worst food? What's the food you hate the most? Uh, mushrooms. I'm gonna be a mushroom then because I don't wanna be eating. <laughs> I don't want anyone to eat me. So I'm going to be a mushroom because I know a lot of people who don't like mushrooms. Yes, yeah. so I'll be a mushroom and that's why. Thank you for your lovely question. Thank you. And give my love to everyone in Hatfield. <laughs> uh, I have another question now from um, Lucy, I believe. Hello, Lucy, who's another budding presenter in the making. Hello, Lucy. Are you there? Hello. <laughs> Hi. Where are you? So how old are you, I'm Lucy? Good, I'm 10. You're 10, and how long have you had alopecia? Uh, for seven years. Wow, that is a long time. And whereabouts are you living? Uh, Leeds. In Leeds? Do you follow Leeds United at all? No. <laughs> no. They're a good team, though. Good team. So what's your question, Lucy? Of all the famous people you've met, which one was your favourite? Oh! Wow. Which one was my favourite? I met the Queen. That was pretty amazing. It's I did some cool. films with... I know, it's quite cool. I did some films with Johnny Depp. Do you know Johnny Depp? Who's uh, from um, Pirates of the Caribbean. He's the, uh, Captain Jack Sparrow in Pirates no of the Caribbean. <laughs> Well, I did some films with him. I met um, Paul McCartney, who was in the Beatles, which are a brilliant pop group, probably the best pop group there's ever been. So um, that was exciting. I met um, uh, Madonna, who's a very famous singer. Um, I met Elton John. That was exciting to me, Elton John. Um, I'm going to go with... I think I'll have to go with the Queen. I think I'll have to go with Her Majesty the Queen. Although I don't think she knew who I was, but <laughs> I, knew who, I knew who she was. I was gonna do a joke, 
I was going to meet her and I was going to go, I was going to pretend not to know who she was. I was going to say, oh, now I know the face. Oh, like that. But then I bottled out of it. I lost, I, 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 yeah, I didn't have the guts. Uh, so I, did, I thought, I thought uh, she might lock me up in the tower. So, um, what about you? Have you ever met any famous people? Uh, I haven't met one, but I've seen, like, I've seen a famous person. Like, what I've seen, think? I went to Soccer Aid and I saw Gordon Ramsay. Well, that's um, good. Ollie Mers. That's uh, good. Mark, Mark Wright. But to be fair, they're the only people that I knew that were there. <laughs> well, I mean, they're, was, they're pretty famous. Well, Robbie Williams, he was in, he was, he was injured, so he wasn't actually playing, but, like... He was, he was going to be there. Well, it's a good job he didn't sing. Otherwise, he'd have had to have taken it. Thank you for your lovely question. Thank you. And now we have another question from Jessica, um, who uh, uh, I hear has been doing a lot to get alopecia more represented. So, Jessica, you've written, it says here, to Julia Donaldson, the great writer, who has now included a little girl with no hair mm. in her book, The Hospital Dog, and you helped get a bald avatar onto Times Table Rockstar, which is a programme schools use. Wow, Jessica, you have been busy. <coughs> Congratulations, you're a superstar. Mm -hmm. How old are you, Jessica? Seven. Wow, and, and how long have you had no hair for? I've had alopecia since I was five since you were five. Wow, but you've been doing really inspiring things. Congratulations. I've Whereabouts are you? In Surrey. Very nice, very posh. Uh, and so tell me um, <coughs> what your question is. What's the best part of having alopecia? The best part of having alopecia is getting to meet people like you because you're all very inspiring. You're all very uh, you. brave. Thanks. That's all right. You're all very brave. I mean, already by the age of seven, you've been doing amazing things that we've just heard about. And so the best part is it gives me an excuse to meet people like you and, and learn your stories. And um, I hope when you are older, some of you, your hair may grow back and some of you, your hair may not grow back, but maybe when you're older, um, you will be able to talk like this with young people and hear their stories and pass on your, your knowledge and your wisdom and all the things you've learned from being a little bit different. And so right now, the best thing I can tell you is being inspired by you. And uh, yeah, that's my answer. So thank you and well done and keep going. Thank you. Uh, that's my pleasure. Uh, so Henry, you've been waiting so patiently. Oh my Lord, Henry, you've been waiting so patiently. Now you deserve a special mention, Henry, because you've done fundraising recently for Alopecia UK, <clears throat> where you told 15 jokes over 15 days and raised eight 150 pounds, that deserves a round of applause. I know we're on mute, but everyone's clapping. Um, so I have a funny feeling what question you might ask. But hello, Henry, where are you? Uh, Bishop Stalkford. Bishop Stalkford. That is where we filmed the Bake Off this year, actually, at a place called Down Hall, which is in Bishop Stalkford. Um, and how old are you? I'm eight. And when did you get alopecia? Uh, when I was five, I think. Okay. And so what is your question? My question is, what's your favourite joke? Knock, knock. Who's there? I done up. I done up who? You done a poo? All right, well, keep it to yourself. <laughs> you don't need to tell everyone about it. <laughs> your favourite joke? <laughs> My favourite joke is, what kind of key opens up a banana? What kind of key opens up a banana? Oh, I don't know. 
Monkey. Oh, that's very good. A monkey. Oh, that's clever. Oh, that's really clever. Did you make that one up? Yeah. You made that up. That's brilliant. That's brilliant. Well, thank you. And congratulations. 850 pounds. Um, uh, that can that can do brilliant things. Well done. Well done to you. Well done to you. 850 pounds. See, just look. <clears throat> just look at the brilliant things you can do if you have no hair. You can make people laugh and you can raise lots of money. Um, well, there you go. I think we probably, we probably, that have, has everyone asked a question? I think they have, haven't they? I think everybody has. Um, well, listen, it was a real pleasure meeting you all. And I can see your thumbs up, Isaac. Uh, it's a real pleasure meeting you all. And thank you for brightening my day and for inspiring me. And um, I hope everybody has a lovely weekend. And it's, it's a school start again on Monday. Everyone back to school on Monday. No, not for Maya. Some of you are going back to school, some of you aren't. Well, listen, however long half term lasts, enjoy. And um, it was lovely to meet you all and thank you. 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 Bye. 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 Bye